There are four or five things that you need to get right in order for your inventory software implementation project to be successful. IT infrastructure, sandbox setup, workflow design, training and practice, and go live. I'm Lance with Brando Consulting, inventory software expert since 2006. In this video, we're going to review those four or five steps. So step one, if this is a desktop app, then IT infrastructure is going to be crucial. Or if you're going to be using scan guns to scan barcodes and track inventory in the warehouse, in other words, mobile devices, then we need to make sure those mobile devices are connected and working, right? So IT infrastructure. So I'm gonna create a Google Doc here so we can review these five steps. Now, of course, if you did not purchase desktop software, then only four steps apply to you, right? You may not have to do the first step. Okay, five steps for successful inventory software implementation. <clears throat> Inventory software can be a data hog. Is your server going to be hosted or is it going to be localized? You need to make sure that whichever you choose, it's robust enough to run your inventory software. Inventory software can be a data hog. If you purchase cloud software, in other words, software that runs from a browser or an app, then you don't need to install your inventory software and have a server or pay for hosting to store the data and to run the server application. Step two is sandbox setup. In other words, don't go into this thinking that your account or your file that you set up is going to be the live file. Go into it with the intention that this first file is going to be a practice file or a sandbox. Those of you that are small enough with only one or two users, you may be able to skip this step. Most people that we work with, of course, are the 5s, 10s, 15, 20, 30 users who can't afford to skip this step. The sandbox should consist of two things, the inventory software and the accounting software. Connected, okay? Not your live accounting software, of course. A copy of your accounting software. Copy of your QuickBooks online account or a copy of your QuickBooks desktop account with the inventory software connected to the sandbox account. So it's a complete sandbox environment. And then of course you can begin to set up all your data. Customers, vendors, parts, locations, costs, prices, categories, etc. Now bills of material, however, are unique. If you're in manufacturing, which we see a lot of, it's not typically best to set up all of your bills of material. It's typically best to set up one bill of material perfectly or give your best stab at it, then go on to the next step without setting them all up. The next step is your workflow design. Now what this means is to put some thought into what your workflow is going to be and how you're going to represent that workflow using your new inventory software. I like to say this is a time to make best practice decisions and document those decisions. And begin this design work by creating an overall workflow summary. This is a one, two, three, four page document. And what this is, is your first stab at how you think it would probably be best for your company to use the inventory software to both plan and record your inventory related activities. Purchasing, sales, production planning, purchase order fulfillment, sales order fulfillment, work order fulfillment, and be sure to include activities just barely outside of your inventory software that affect your software or that your software affects, like AR and AP management or estimating or shopping cart integrations or EDI integrations. How are the cells going to be created before you put them in the software? Then after you've taken your first stab at your overall workflow design, dive into the specifics and create specific procedures. Create specific procedure documents. Now this is a time where it all comes together. This is a time that you test the data in your sandbox. You actually 
create transactions for the first time. No one else is involved except for the project manager and of course your consultant if you use a company like ours. These are documents that tell the user where to click in the software. It may have little snippet screenshots or snagit screenshots, it may have little short video clips. In your first workflow summary, it's good to think about who is going to be responsible for which step. Who's going to be responsible for fulfilling which role? So in the previous workflow summary, you'll put a department's name or someone's name next to the responsibility you created. So when creating the specific procedural documents, you'll have that person or that department in mind. And you can write down the procedure in a way that that person or that department will understand. You may have several documents, each one focusing on a particular responsibility or a particular step in your overall workflow. Sales order entry, for instance, production planning, purchasing, PO fulfillment, which may include receiving, reconciling, put away. Now, if you're a manufacturer with multiple steps in your production process, you may want to write down each step in the overall workflow summary and also include each step in the specific procedural documents. So you may need to start and complete one work order before you start and complete the next work order. This is just one example of a list of procedural documents you could create. Now another thing that usually comes up during workflow design is a need for a custom label or a custom report or changes to a template. And sometimes this custom report or custom label needs to be printed at a specific step in your workflow in order for it to work properly. So oftentimes this is the time to look into that. Also, this is the time where you may have discovered that the software you purchased may not have a specific feature that you needed. And the custom report may fill that need or custom software, custom development may fill that need. Integration with 3PL software, for instance, or integrating an outside scheduling app with your inventory software. Hopefully this didn't happen, but if it did, this is the time to discover it before you start training your people. Notice, so far we've done all of this before we've begun training. Now, finally, when we're completely done with workflow process design, we've entered all these transactions in, and the key person or the project manager has tested all of the steps and has become familiar with it and I almost forgot created the rest of the bills material right created the rest of the bills material so once we have the practice file all the way set up and we're confident that we have solid individual procedures and a solid overall workflow procedure we have the labels and the documents reports any integrations that may be set up, we can quickly and easily train our people just on their individual roles. So after we're done with all of this, we can do something we've been wanting to do all along, and that is schedule the go live date. After you've made best practice decisions and recorded those decisions in procedural documents and assigned roles and responsibilities, you can estimate how long it will take for training and you can schedule the exact go live date. Up until then it was a moving target and we weren't really quite sure. Now finally the next moment we've anticipated is training and practice. The project manager, the key person, the internal expert can now train the individual people in the company in their individual roles and responsibilities. Basically train anyone who was not involved in the workflow design. And this training will occur in the Sandbox environment, QuickBook Sandbox, and in the Inventory Software Sandbox. Training should be strategically scheduled right before go live because you don't want the people who were trained to forget what they were trained on. So we want to go live immediately after training is complete and everyone's had adequate practice. So training could take a week, it could take two weeks, it could take three weeks depending on the complexity of your workflow process. And finally, 
day we've all looked forward to is go live. And if we follow the previous steps, beat them, go live will be smooth. It won't be chaos, it won't be panic time, it will be anticipated, all will be ready. If everyone did their part and thoroughly tested their role and responsibility, be sure to include the controller or the bookkeeper. Oftentimes they tend to think they may not have a role in the inventory software implementation. And if they did not play a part in the inventory software implementation and review the, the data that the inventory software pushed through to QuickBooks and review the account mapping setup, then they may have an unpleasant surprise because they did not do their part and have a chance to voice their concern and ask their questions. So part of sandbox setup is account mapping to QuickBooks. If anyone's going to leave out the accountant on this project, it's going to be an unhappy go live day. Make sure the account is involved from the very beginning throughout everything to the end. Inventory software is a great tool to bring the office and the warehouse together. All the operation activities affects the results in the accounting software. All right, go live usually looks like this. Create a new blank live file or account. These steps can slightly differ depending on which inventory software you purchased. Export list type data from the sandbox. Import the list type data into the live account or file. Enter in all live open orders such as sales orders, purchase orders, and work orders. Enter the open portions of the open orders if some of the orders have already been partially fulfilled. Now in many inventory software programs they come with the ability to export and import sales orders, work orders, and purchase orders. If that's the case then training and practice, the training and practice step can include entering live POs, SOs, and work orders. And you can go ahead and, and fulfill them. As a matter of fact, that's the best type of training is to enter live transactions into the practice file because their mentality is more focused and more serious on what they're learning. Then in the practice file, you can go ahead and practice fulfilling those orders. And when it's time to go live, you can pick and choose which orders to take out and put into the live file. So you're not repeating too many steps. This is the time we finally prepare and import the live inventory quantities, values, and locations. If you are doing location tracking, not everyone. Carefully connect to the live QuickBooks account or QuickBooks file. I say carefully because you want to be sure that the way you do this will not send thousands of adjusting transactions over to QuickBooks. You just uploaded thousands of inventory adjustments or hundreds of inventory adjustments into the inventory software. Instead of pushing those hundreds or thousands of adjustments over to QuickBooks, it's a lot cleaner to just manually enter in one final adjusting journal entry into QuickBooks to make QuickBooks match the inventory count or the inventory upload. Make an adjusting journal entry, QuickBooks, bring the balance to match the inventory levels in the inventory software. At that point, then you can give the go ahead. You can give access rights to the live inventory software. People can begin to receive inventory, pick inventory, ship inventory, close work orders, and the posting transactions that create posting transactions in the inventory software will flow through to QuickBooks properly. Begin live inventory transactions. So there you have it. Five steps or four steps for successful inventory software implementation. IT infrastructure, sandbox setup, workflow design, train and practice, go live. Follow those five steps or four steps and your inventory software 
implementation project will be a success. Comment below if you have any questions. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. And be sure to like five steps or four steps for a successful inventory software implementation project.